This is Stronger Than My Father with Marcus Minnis. Welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Stronger Than My Father podcast. This is our season two where we are looking to continue to delve into the world of fatherhood. I'm always going to continue to say that fatherhood matters. Uh, I got to give a special thanks to my producer, Mr. Jim McCarthy and Jim McCarthy voiceover. Please look him up. He has one of the best podcasts out here and he produces my podcast. Also got to give a shout out to my production team led by my wife. Uh, Latoya who helped set up all the things And uh, basically keep me together So uh, I'm truly excited To get back under the mic um, Tell people you know, allow, allow guests to tell their stories And hopefully it can give you A better sense on what fatherhood Is and why it's so important To talk about So I have a guest this morning Who I met uh, probably about 6-7 months ago yeah. uh, We had lunch His story was amazing and I said, man, we got to get under the mic. We got to talk about it and tell your story on fatherhood. So I would like to get a uh, welcome, excuse me, Mr. Brandon Maxwell, the CEO of One Heart Cleaning Company. Welcome to the show, man. Applause and snaps, crackles and pops. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I'm ready to go. Uh, for my listening audience um, and those who are new to this podcast, um, Stronger Than My Father podcast is shedding a light on fatherhood. And letting people know that fatherhood matters A lot of the issues that you see in this world um, Stems from the father mm -hmm. um, The father leading The father guiding So Brandon I want you to tell my audience A little bit about yourself Where you're from um, Your experience with your father And let's delve into it Man I hope we got the time Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a crazy story um, You know I, Well first and foremost uh, You know I want to just say that um, if if anyone has ever seen, I don't even know if, if you've ever seen the movie uh, called Antoine Fisher. Yeah. Uh, with Denzel yeah. Washington. Uh, I can't remember the other, uh, the co-star that was in that movie. But uh, but that story is literally like my story on the screen in a sense, you know. Wow. And so when I watched that movie for the first time when I was 18 years old, you know, that's really what kind of sparked a lot of questions to my mom. And I'll dive into that in a little bit. But like watching that movie uh, was, a, was a launching pad for me to kind of dive into um, you know, finding my father, looking for my father, understanding like who in the world my father really is. Um, so I grew up uh, in Texas, uh, mm -hmm. actually, a small little town uh, called Wichita Falls. Uh, so I was born, I was born there. Um, and then my name actually, uh, when I was born, as far as what I wrote on every single school paper, all the way up until uh, the 10th grade, uh, my name was Brandon Brantley, uh, mm. you know, and so and that was the last name of my father the guy that you know I, you know at least you know growing up was um and so and we moved around a lot because yeah. you know he was in the military um and so we was moving around all over the place from texas to georgia um you know and we went overseas for a couple of years to germany um but you know once we uh, got to georgia back in 1989 uh things kind of got rocky you mm -hmm. know uh, as a family you know things were things was pretty crazy um you know from you know, drugs being in the family, um, from violence being in the family. And uh, so it was, it was pretty scary. And uh, one day my mom decided that she was going to, we were going to run. Like we were going to pack up. We were going to, we were going to leave I and mean, we were going to go. Um, so we, we ran a lot, you know, mm. um, I would say from uh, 1990, probably till about 95, 96, um, we were all over the place. And, you know, I got tired of telling people, you know, why we were really running, you mm -hmm. know, I got tired of talking about, you know, the violence. It was embarrassing. You know, when you're, when you're a kid, um, you know, and you're going through stuff like that, it's, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to talk to other kids because you know how kids are, man. Kids yeah, make fun of make stuff, fun of you know, stuff. and back in the day, man, people, you couldn't even wear short pants back in the day because yeah, I remember that. yeah people call you, they were, oh, you flooding, you know, yeah. I was like, what the heck is flooding, <laughs> you know, anyway, you know, and so it's just like all of the stuff that people would say. So you kind of embarrass as a kid to, to talk about stuff at school. Mm -hmm. Um, but so I just I just channeled the fact that we you know we were in the military so I just used that to to you know my story you know all the way up until 10th grade I was just always talking about oh yeah we're just in the military we're just in the military but I didn't want to talk about you know the fact that we were in women's shelters you yeah. know and the fact that we were you know going back and forth to my grandmother's house you know going back and forth you know to my grandfather's you know we were all over the place but we was running uh, because we was running from you know Your my dad, dad. Yeah. yeah you know because of the violence and everything that was going on uh, in the home, man, I the, the 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 amount of stuff that I could tell you, the stuff that I've seen, um, you know, there's there's really no place ever 
uh, for a man to put his hands on a woman, you yeah, know, I agree with um, that. and the stuff that I've seen, the stuff that I went through, I mean, even even crossing over to to us as children, yeah, you know, and I kind of felt like, you know, even at that point in time, like, why in the world I got it the worst? I wasn't even the oldest. I'm like, yeah. why, why did my older brother get it the yeah. worst? You know, yeah. I, I I seemed like I got it, you know, quite a quite a bit, but um, we ended up um, connecting back with him um, in the late '90s. Um, mm-hmm. He had completely changed his life. We didn't hear we didn't hear from him uh, for a couple of years, probably from like. 90, 94, 95, um, and then probably about 97, 98 was when we, we heard from him again, and him and my mom kind of got in contact. Um, but um, once they got in contact, he was he had gotten remarried to another woman, mm-hmm. uh, Christian Christian woman, um, and had changed his life around and wanted to spend time with us, wanted to see us. And so um, him and my mom agreed. Uh, this was in the summer. This was probably in the summer of 99 now. Uh, where they had agreed to finally like allowing us to go um, to to be with him, and he's in, he was in Nashville at the yeah. time, and uh, so at that point in time we were actually in uh, Wichita, Kansas, and so again you know even though I grew up in Wichita Falls, Texas, at this moment we were in Wichita, uh, Wichita, Kansas, and you know I never I never had a problem spelling Wichita just because it was always yeah. in Wichita, <laughs> you know somewhere, and uh, but we ended up um, getting in contact with him. Um, him and my mom agreed. Uh, that we would go uh, spend the summer with him uh, in 99. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they were going to, you know, sign pieces of paper, whatever they got to do to make sure everything was, like, legit and everything. But uh, my mom was still, she was still at the point, was in that world, you know, um, living in the world of, of drugs and, and different things. And I don't know whether he knew that or whether he yeah. uh, remembered the fact that that's some of the stuff that she was doing. Uh, but my mom, she was never, for her birthday, man, she was never around for her birthday. You know, she would always go celebrate, uh, with her sisters, and I don't mean blood sisters. You know, you know how in the, the black yeah, community, like yeah, we, got, we have yeah. sisters and brothers of the <laughs> many kind. Um, but uh, so she would always just go with her, with her sisters, her best friends, and she yeah. would she would be gone like for the whole weekend. You know, but my mom was the mom who didn't just have a birthday weekend. She was celebrate like, uh, the whole celebrate. month, bro. Like it was the whole month. Yeah, and a uh, celebration. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this: um, the story is very interesting. I think as a child, how did it help your development going into manhood? Most kids. Uh, and I have undergrad psychology. Mm-hmm. Kids young start using their brain to yeah. start soaking up stuff. Right. You can remember things. Yeah. How did that shape you growing up? Did that make you more angry with your dad when you was on the run? Uh, when you see abuse in the house? Because most men who sees abuse repeats the same cycle mm-hmm. because they feel like that's how I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I'm supposed to hear the woman. Um, I was blessed to be in a house where I didn't see that. Mm-hmm. So how did that shape you? As yeah. a man growing up, going into your teens, how did that shape you um, growing up? Well, I, I will say that, like, for, for most young men, um, as a boy, the thing that we always connect to, I don't care whether you're young, whether you're older, people always call mama. Like, mama. Yes, I had another there's podcast. Some, there's Mike something different that, about, yeah. like, from a boy, um, you know, to his mom. You know, as, mm. as we've seen so many different things in this world, like, even to... You know, with George Floyd and, yeah. you know, seeing a lot of these, even just, you know, recent just the events that happened in Memphis, yeah. you know, where like these men are calling out to their mama, yeah. you know, when they're in distress, you know. And so there's there's something that's a connection uh, from a boy to a mom. And the, the, the incident that for me um, that I that I can speak about. Um, is, you know, we, we, we had house parties, my mom, you know, we would go to these house parties and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and this is going to tie into the question that you're, you're asking. Um, but you know, we were always like, it, it would be an adult house party, but yeah, you know, all yeah. the parents would bring their kids for some reason cause they didn't have babysitters and they wouldn't find <laughs> one or whatever. So it's like, we're yeah. all at this adult house party, even though we weren't supposed to be. Yeah. So they would put us all in one room. You know, so it'd be like 14 kids in one little room, you know, we're all hot and sweaty and just ain't got nothing to do but play (laughs) cards or whatever the case may be. So I I had to use the restroom and we were, we were told that we had to knock on the door before we can like leave the room to even come out to get water or anything, man. And uh, so I'm knocking, knocking, knocking. No one's coming to the door. I'm like, you know, the music's loud or whatever, like no one's coming to the door. Um, So. I was like, man, forget this. I'm going, I just got to go to the bathroom. And I'm about yeah. to use the bathroom myself. I'm going to the bathroom. So I walked out, you know, picked my head out, looking around, you know, make sure nobody see me, whatever. And I just bolted, you know, to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I got to the bathroom door, um, the room that was on my left, the bathroom was straight ahead. Mm-hmm. The room that was on my left, the door was cracked. 
um, the light was on and all I could hear was just like this sound of like a gargling or like, mm -hmm. a, you know, if you like gargle salt water or whatever, like I kept hearing this like gargling sound. So it was just really weird, you know, and I peeked my head in the door to see what in the world was going on. And my dad was like choking my mom. Um, mm. And, and I could just see like saliva coming out of her mouth or whatever. And I just did. I just, I pushed the door open as far as possible. And I just screamed at the top of my lungs, man, I'm, I'm probably eight, you mm -hmm. know, at this point in time, eight, nine years old. And I'm just, I just scream at the top of my lungs and he like released her. And then, uh, you know, uh, she comes running out the door, um, trying to, you know, catch her breath or whatever. And she goes outside and just trying to catch her breath. And, uh, that was probably one of the, one of the scariest incidents, you know, you know, there's been a lot of, bitty th a lot of many things, but you know, to tie into the question that you, you just asked as far as like me growing up and me, mm -hmm. like what, is, what was, what have I channeled into is, is that violence is a very real thing. And okay. that, you know, people, people go through a lot of things that you, you go to work with, you know, and, yeah. and you, you're literally, you got you know, like coworkers, employees, you got best friends, you got siblings, you got whatever, you know, strangers even. Um, and you don't know what people are going through. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't know what anybody else is going through. And I carry that to try to understand like people in, in general, you know? Yeah. I, I think I, I never, you know, like I said, um, I never understood domestic violence. Mm -hmm. You know, my father told me never put a hand on a woman. Yeah. Now he said, if you got to defend yourself, that's totally different. That's different. Yeah. You know, but, me just, you know, grabbing my fist and cold cocking my wife, you know, I don't understand that because of that. But I also see that men repeat stuff. Mm -hmm. And so if you if you see violence, you may think that's how the way to deal with things. Right. And they may not be the best way. Yeah. And, and I, I, for me, though, I, I went a completely different opposite direction, yeah. though, in that because like to me seeing stuff like that and I know what you said about it's like history repeating itself. Like if that's what you grew up in, it's like, oh, that's normal. Like, that's yeah, normal. that's not I, for the record to be stated like that's not normal behavior like, yeah. like people should not do that to other people in general yeah. let alone a man to a woman like you don't put your hands on a woman you don't need to be choking a woman I don't and even to your point of what you were saying as far as like even from a defense you know yeah you protect yourself yeah you gonna protect but you yourself don't, but you don't need to still cold clock a woman <laughs> no, I don't you think know what I'm saying like you, you, and I know that's not even what you're saying because yeah. you can protect yourself still and yeah. have a conscious mindset thought um, of what even that protection looks like well, you know what's the true threat that this woman is bringing to you in your life so and, it's, and then one thing I want to kind of curve that is that you see a lot more on TV with domestic mm -hmm. violence yeah. um, and it's an area that I don't have a lot of experience in because I asked the same question why would a man do it yeah. um, I don't know what so many men go through um did they see that growing up um, to say that you want to be dominant? I don't know if it's a man who has low self-esteem, so yeah. I'm going to hit you. Right. Um, I just don't understand that. And I think I applaud you for saying I want to go a different direction because most men go in the same direction. Yeah. They feel like, you know, I'm hurt, and this is what happened to my mom. And I wouldn't even know what to think if my dad was – I go in the room and see my dad choking on my mom. I probably would fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, I, I think and I'm surprised how, you didn't do that. Well, I think know? it depends on how old you are too. You know what I mean, yeah. you know, when you when you are a boy, you think like a boy. You yeah. know, you don't necessarily. And I, and I wasn't even the oldest. You know, yeah. one in the family. But and dude, when I tell you, I was, <laughs> I was the scrawniest kid. Like I swear, <laughs> if you would have just flicked me, I would have went flying. You know, so it wasn't even about in my mindset of protecting my mom in a sense from a physical standpoint because violence scared me. Like I was yeah. not a I was not a kid that ran towards violence. You know, yeah. so like a lot of kids growing up in the hood and that kind of thing, like they may want to join gangs, they may want to join like a violent uh, kind of mentality, but that was never my mindset. Violence yeah. was never an answer for me, you know? Yeah. And so I was more or less the type of person who who ran away from violence and like didn't want to be a part of it, didn't want to be around it. Um, you know, and so in, in that in that scene, you know, with my mom the only thing I could do is scream. Yeah. You know, I screamed yeah. at the top of my lungs, which then jarred him to release my mom and she went out the door. Um, and that was really probably one of the last times um, that we saw him, you know, yeah. for, for quite some time until, uh, you know, Wichita, you know, and again, years had passed in between this incident um, and then they reconnected again. He had a completely different life, at least with what we, what we knew, um, you know, and so he ended up showing up, um, way sooner than he was supposed to. Um, yeah, now, yeah. you know, when you marry, you end up learning people and their patterns and their behaviors. And mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't change. They stick in the same patterns and same uh, behaviors. And, 
Um, so he remembered that, and he ended up showing up like the weekend before he was supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm the one that opened up the door. Yeah. I ain't, we ain't seen him in a long time, so I was excited. You know, I was yeah. excited to see him. Um, so I opened up the door. Um, and I was like, hey, Dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, first thing he said to me was, where are my kids? First thing. Oh, and I'm, and I'm, conf- I'm confused as all get out because like, I'm like, not how you doing, son? Nothing, a hug nothing. Or nothing. It was where my kids. And I was just like, but you at kid, that right? point in time, I, that's what I thought. Oh, man. I'm literally in the mindset wow. that this is my, we share the same last name. I'm like, we were in the same household. You know, you beat me too. Like, like I'm, there's like a bond. People call it a trauma bond. Like when you go through wow, stuff like that, you, that you, you literally, you bond through trauma, um, mm-hmm. you know? And so sometimes like, and that's why like, even when, like when a woman or anybody is going through a domestic violence situation, people ask like, why do you stay? Like, why don't yeah, you, I, I ask that question why don't sometimes. you get out? And a lot of times, whether it's fear, fear keeps people locked in. But then sometimes even like I've asked this to my mom, and uh, and the crazy thing about it is that people, some people mentality they, they think is love, you know, they think that this is love that's what's happening to them, you know, and it's like, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. I saw my mom get beat, like my mom, my yeah. mom saw my grandmother. So it's just like you see these patterns and you associate that with, you know, this man really loves me, you know, this is how he responds in love and it's not, you know, and so you have this difficulty on, on actually breaking free yeah. uh, from that situation, you know, and so for me, I, I had a moment where I just, I was like, I was so confused with with that response and I just, honestly, I stood at the door just kind of puzzled, well, I wanna, didn't I, say anything because I was, I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm like, what do you mean, you know, where are my kids? And I just stood there frozen and he just moved me out the way, just brushed past me, Moved me out the way, and uh, he went through the house. And, and this is the guy you thought that was your father, man. For years, I was uh, twelve. Dude, that's messed up. I was twelve at the time, you know. Wow. And and again, like my name is him. Like we have the same name. Like every he's been in my mom's life. He's been in our life. We've been through all these situations. So I'm just confused at this point. And he's going through the house. Um, my stepdad was in the house. He was drunk. I mean, he was he had drank the night before, so he he never even came out the room. Um, and then my mom wasn't there. He went in the house. He packed up their stuff and uh, put them in a the car. And, and then and didn't he take you, didn't say nothing to nope, you? Nope. How, now, how did it make you feel, like, as a young man? How did it make you feel? In the, mom, in the moment, it was just pure confusion. Okay. Like, I, I was just confused. I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know why this action was even taking place. Again, he wasn't even supposed to be there that weekend, you mm-hmm. know, and so I was just confused and, and kind of lost in the moment, just like watching, you know, watching this whole thing happen. You well, know? That, it's, 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 I want to I wanna move past and go into adulthood mm-hmm. with you um, because the stories is I'm just sitting here amazed that a man would do something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's why I, I do these podcasts Just for people to know Also to open my eyes up more To see that You know A lot of people say I lived a privileged life Because mm-hmm. I had mom and dad Didn't see a lot of problems in Man, my life. I don't call that privilege <laughs> I call that right Like that's the way it was supposed to I wish some people would say that Yeah, yeah. I, I, You know So A lot of people ask me Why am I an advocate for fatherhood mm-hmm. Why am I an advocate for um, young men who don't have dads Why am I trying to help them yep. Is that I just felt bad I yeah. just felt bad Like you know You should have what I had mm-hmm. You should have what I had yeah. That's why I mentored But let's go into adulthood yeah. um, Moving to adulthood um, Tell my audience a little bit about Kind of how well established adulthood I know you have four beautiful children um, Kind of giving them a story about Going into adulthood um, having kids and um, living an adult life now. Yeah, well, your audience is gonna kill you if I don't finish this story. Oh yeah, yeah, let me gonna, finish the story, man. Know exactly yeah, what, my fault. What, what happened? I'm going ahead. They're like, what in the world happened? No, well, it's, you guys also talk about. Adulthood, well, though. talk about the, yeah. When you told me uh, when we were doing pre-production, you said, um, "I thought this guy wasn't my dad, yeah. and I still don't know who my." Biological? Can you say you still yeah. don't know who my biological father is to this day? Yeah. Well, I I ended up I ended up finding them, but the way this ties into an okay. adult, to adulthood, and I was telling the story about the Antoine Fisher when I turned eighteen years old. Um, so when when they end up going to Nashville, I called my mom, told my mom like, hey, you know what? He showed up. Like they're gone. She was tripping. She was like, what in the world? You know. So she came home. They were gone, obviously. Um, so her and my stepdad got into it really bad. Um, probably about a month later, um, you know, he ended up sending us a letter. Uh, in the mail saying that he was going for full custody of the three children that he took. Yeah, I remember you telling um, me that. And yeah. so my mom literally packed up her stuff and she went to Nashville, um, you know, right then. And so they went into a custody battle. 
um, that went on for quite some time. Um, and I stayed in Nashville with my stepdad. Um, eventually, we all end up moving um, to Nashville. Uh, my stepdad moved first. Um, I stayed actually in that same home. We were in a duplex. You know, the next door neighbor was kind of like my overseers at the same at the time. So I'm I'm 12 years old with my stepsister who's eight, and we're in a house together. You know, and the next door neighbor is the guardian. You know, and so mm. this is the living situation at this point in time that probably went on for maybe four months, four or five months. Um, and then eventually uh, we ended up moving into um, my stepdad's uh, brother's house. And so we ended up staying with him for a little bit. And then me and my stepsister took a Greyhound bus from Wichita, Kansas, 22 hours later to Nashville, Tennessee. You know, and when you talk about like the hand of God, um, you know, the bus driver, you know, when I tell the story, I always talk about the bus driver, don't know his name, don't remember anything about his face. I just know that he was the guardian. Mm. Um, and he made sure every stop that we were that we stopped at, when we supposed to stay on the bus, he told us to stay on the bus. When we were going to certain cities like Kansas or like uh, St. Louis or wherever, he would always tell us like, hey, stay on the bus, y'all don't get off. You know, I'll let you know when you, when you need to get off. And so he watched over us the entire, entire 22 hours to Nashville. Um, and so we get to Nashville, they're still going through their, their court battle. Um, my mom eventually wins them um, and gets gets the kids back. Um, and so I enroll into to Glencliff High School. So this okay. ties into my adulthood. So um, now as a 13-year-old uh, kid, you know, and, and enrolling in Glencliff High School, my, my social security card said Brandon Brantley on it as well. Mm -hmm. My birth certificate, my birth certificate for the first time is I, when I see my birth certificate when I was enrolling in the high school, and my birth certificate said Brandon Maxwell on it. And so my, uh, the counselor where the person was enrolling us said, well, you got to pick a name, like which one you can't, you know, you got one that says Brandon Brantley, another one says Brandon Maxwell, you got to, you got to pick whichever one. So at this point I'm like, well, you didn't choose me. Why am I going to choose your last name? You know, my, hey. to my dad, I'm like, you didn't, yeah. you didn't choose me. You yeah. left me there. So I'm going to remove this last name that I've had up until this point for, for at least 10 years of my, of my schooling, uh, life. And so I end up choosing Brandon Maxwell and, and that's the reason why. Uh, my my name change at that point in time was to Brandon Maxwell. I was going to so ask you that. That's uh -huh. why I changed. Okay. Yeah, and so um, it wasn't even until two years later after that. So now I'm a senior in high school, and I go see this movie called Antoine Fisher, and I'm dude, I'm a wreck in this movie. I'm bawling, I'm crying. I couldn't even like, you know, I'm I'm sitting here with my friends at the time, and they're like, "What in the world is wrong? With, what's wrong with him?" You know, and I'm like going through this movie. Yeah. Like I'm I'm emotional through this, and my friends are just like, "Oh, it's a good movie." And I'm like. Yeah. Now, that's my life. Like my life is on that screen right there, mm. you know. And just trying, just this man trying to find his family, not knowing his family. So that's what sparked the conversation for me to go talk to my mom. I'm like, mom, why? Why was my last name different on my birth certificate than my social security? Why did he? Because I didn't still ain't talk to him at this point. Because I didn't like him. I was mad at him, you know, yeah. for not taking me and everything that we. Your biological the family. father. No, the father that I thought was my father, like this okay. guy that was the Brent, the Brantley last name. Yeah. That's why I was like, you know, what in the world is, you know, why didn't you take me? So I was upset with him for a long time, um, you know, and so I never talked to him for quite a while. Um, even after that, even us moving to Nashville, didn't really talk to him at all. Um, and then. I went to my mom and I asked my mom about it. I'm like, why, what, what is going on here? And then that's when she told me like that he wasn't my biological father and that my biological father um, left, you know, when she was pregnant, um, he just, he just walked out. You know, she found out that, um, that he had a family um, already and he was in the military too. And that he, uh, he had just walked out. He, he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna take it. So she, so that was the story, bro, for me, for two years, now I'm going to college, you know. Yeah. I end up enrolling uh, at Lipscomb University. Um, I'm saying, you know what, you know, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make something in my life, I'm gonna do something, you know, different than, than what I've seen in my path, and I, I felt like God was calling me to that university. Um, I end up going there. So on my sophomore year of college, um, I had this inkling of like, well, this guy who just completely just didn't care, was completely like just, you know what, I'm not gonna deal with it mentality I'm like you know I want to find him you know I want to I want to I got questions you know for yeah, him I want to yeah, I want to know so I went back to my mom about it and then this is when things changed for me um I went back to my mom about it and I was just asking her about him and she's like why are you so interested you know knowing and I was like I just and I got all these questions like I just don't I don't know how somebody can choose that you know I'm like how do you just choose to have children in this world to say 
forget you. Like, I don't, I don't want no part of this. Like, you know, there's, there's something so powerful about being a parent and about having children in this world. And I just see it differently than what I was attributed to and what I was raised into. Like, I just, I'm like, so I had all these questions. So then she ended up telling me the deeper truth to this matter. Okay. Um, and the deeper truth to this whole situation um, was that he didn't just walk out. Um, he did have a family. He did have another family. He had a wife um, and he had uh, another child already. My mom at the time was, um, was 18 years old. She had already had a son. Uh, at 17, you know, growing up in a Christian household, you should know this, is that that's a children out of wedlock type of thing, man. And, <laughs> that's and, a and, whole and, different and the, ball In the community yeah. that we was in, you yeah. know, and, and them back black churches that we was going to back in the day, man, like that's, man, you, you Satan yourself, you know, like you are outcasted, you know, and so like I know she had a hard time in that setting, and so what she did was she told um, my biological father that she was just going to abort me. She couldn't, she couldn't have another child, you know, outside of wedlock and deal with the stuff that she dealt with at home. Um, so she was just going to abort me. Now, obviously, she was angry. She was upset finding out that he had another family and all that stuff, but she was going to choose to abort me. Obviously, she didn't. I'm talking. Like, you, <laughs> see, you see me, you know? So thankfully, she didn't make that choice. Um, but I know that a lot of women um, and girls deal with that. Um, you know, and some of them choose to take that option, but she didn't. And I'm grateful that she didn't because I wouldn't be here. Um, but she didn't tell me that for a long time. And when she told me that, she told him that. So he left thinking. You weren't even around. I wasn't going to be got here. Got it. Now I got you know? it. Got and, it. Uh, got and so he has no clue. He has no clue that I live, that, I, that I'm existing um, up until... You know, a few years ago, you know, so I went on this whole spree of trying to find a man as an adult, um, trying to figure out, you know, who he was, trying to look up on, you know, air forces and different like military backgrounds. And this was post 9-11 when this okay. happened. And, you know, and if you remember anything about the whole 9-11, security was crazy tight, yeah, you know, I like that. airports. I mean, anywhere you went, everything was so tight. I mean, you couldn't call a, a governmental you know, phone number and get any information like they're who are you, what do you want? Like what, everything was just so like airtight, you know, um, to where you couldn't hardly get any kind of information. So, um, I waited for years before this season would pass close to, you know, me graduating. Facebook came about around that yeah. point in time. Um, and a lot of people may not remember this, um, but Facebook originally was for college students. You know, yeah, I didn't know that. it wasn't for the yeah. masses. It was for college students. You even had to had, a dot edu uh, email yeah, address yeah, in order yeah. to register for Facebook, and you have to have so many kids at your school register before they would even open it and unlock it to your university. So, um, but me thinking, oh, it's the internet, you know, yeah. like everybody's gonna be on this. Yeah. Like, my dad surely is gonna be on this, and his name is is so. It, it's it's the last name is Johnson, but the first name is Aquarius, and I'm like, mm. there cannot be that many. <laughs> Aquarius Johnsons in the world, like that cannot mm -hmm. be. So you, you know? hold on. So you say your dad's so my biological name is Johnson. is Johnson. His last name is Johnson. But how do you get Maxwell? That's my grandfather's name. Yeah. So my mom. Again, the grandfather first name. My my grandma. My grandfather's last name. Last name. My, which okay. Is my grandmother's also last name. So Maxwell is my my grandparents' name. Oh, That's so you never took your, so you never took your dad's last name. Well, remember she was going to abort me. Yeah. You know, so yeah. she, there was no tie to Got Johnson it. at Got all. It now. Because right. at that point in time she was going she was going to abort me, and so he wasn't in the picture at all at the point. Okay. You know, and so when she had me, she put my last name as Maxwell, which was her maiden um, okay. name, obviously. Right. I got it. Now. Um, you know, and so. So the Maxwell name was what was carried for me, and I'm going through Facebook and I was like, maybe, just maybe, you know, I'm Googling names. I'm like, just maybe I can find them, and uh, surely, and then of course I didn't. And then sometime in 2013, 2014, um, I had my first child, um, you know, a daughter, and dude, that completely, dude, being a being a father for the first, especially for the first time, yeah, man, yeah. I'm smiling about it now because, I mean, I remember when I was told that she, you know, you know, at the time, you know, I was married, but when I, when she told me that she was pregnant, man, I swear, man, the world stopped. Like, mm -hmm. everything just was like, it, it was one of the most surreal, beautiful moments, you know, in my life to hear that I was going to be a father, you know? And I was like, I'm going to be 
something for this child that I didn't have. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. going to be everything for this girl. Um, and she's going to get the best parts of life, going to be, be get the best parts of me. Um, and and the, the most valuable thing she's going to get is my presence and my time. You know, she's well, going to get that. Well, I mean, I can't remember that when MJ was born and I was just like, that's that's mm-hmm. well. I was one. I was good with one. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, you got my last name, <laughs> right? That's and you it. Had a boy too. Boy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe because I thought about my dad. Yeah. Um. When MJ was born, like mm-hmm. everything you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And so I can definitely understand that. I think what thing you told you said and why I cliche say the cycle ends for me. He's like, you're gonna find a way to break that cycle. Right. You found the way to say, hey, I'm not gonna be like my father. But I think just now I kind of see how you tie into Antoine Fisher. Yeah. You are searching yeah, the searching. For, for my father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this then. Why would, uh, you know, you can have resentment and anger because he was not there. For sure. All right. And I did. Okay. Now, is that, you think that's more of your dad didn't know you was around? Did your mom ever tell him that, hey, I didn't abort you? Yeah. He is here. You need yeah. to, you need to have a relationship. Did she ever do that? The resentment and anger came didn't come from me to my father. It came from me to my mom. Ah, it, it, I was the, hoping the, you wouldn't say that. It was man because I was, hoping I, you wouldn't I was say like that. these were your choices. You know, you're the adult in this situation. Now, granted, being 18, being in that situation, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, bro. We we've, we've all yeah. gone through hard stuff, so we can't say that. Hey, when you face hard tribulation, yeah. like you still have a choice, though. Dang, you know, and I she think, didn't tell you. And I no, man. I Dang. didn't know. I didn't find out until I was in college. That whole the, the fullness of the whole story. I didn't find out about that until I was college in college, my sophomore year mm. in college. You know, so I'm like, even even when I moved to Nashville, was going to Glencliff, and when I was, I mean, there was a moment for you to be completely honest. Yeah, like that moment when I had to change my name from Brantley to Maxwell. Like that was that moment. Like, why didn't you tell me the full story then? You know, that's kind of like, like the movie Biker Boys. Man, I'm telling you, that was like yeah. the Biker Boys. Yeah. When he told him that yeah. uh, uh, Smoke was his real yeah. dad. Exactly. That's and messed up. I'm like, you waited four more years after that to tell me the whole story. You know, and I and so I was I started resenting her. You know, because I'm like, these are your choices. These are your decisions. Like, mm-hmm. why didn't you just fully tell me the truth? And so I didn't, I felt like my, my biological dad was more like the person that was on the outs. Like, he has no clue of anything. Yeah. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know she even had me. Mm-hmm. You know, she said that he even said that I would be there. Like, he gave her the option. Ooh. Like, I, I think she told me she, like, be he mad. would be there. And so I was. Like, I had a lot. Me and my mom, and then on top of that, man, me and my mom, you know, we just did not have the best like together relationship, you know? And so I became, as a child, the reason why I started to resent her a little bit even more was like, I'm a kid and I'm trying to protect you. You know? And I'm like, it should be, I should never have to, you shouldn't as a kid protect your parents. You know, from violence, from drugs, from drinking, from all that. You you, you need to be a kid, bro. Like, you just need to be a kid. And that's the thing that I give to my kids. You know, and even though me and their mom not together anymore, I even told the same thing. I was like, you know what? The best thing that we can do is co-parent to them together. But they got to remain kids. Like, they need to be kids. I mean, you're still a kid at 18, 19. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't say that, but that's true. Yeah, but it's the fact, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, they're still kids. Let's Let's just let them be kids, you know? And so I was like, I wish... Wish I could have just been a kid, like so because I had to grow up so fast, and because like when you asked me the question about like the whole like what is do you repeat a cycle? Yeah, same thing with my mom. I was saying to her like she has a choice. Everybody always has a choice. You have a choice on what you choose to do, and that's why even with a, a violent situation, like you still have a choice to not put your hand on a woman. You still yeah, have a choice. That. You can walk out that door, and yeah. I'd have been faced with that. I've been faced with a, a many a situation where I could have done something and I could have physically put my hand on a, a woman yeah. and I still chose not to. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about being in your face, cussing at you, <laughs> spit <laughs> actually fall, falling in your face, mm. you know, just just anger, you know. Most dudes and, knocking somebody and I'm out, I'm telling man. you, man, you literally like, you doing it. Better back up. You need to yeah. back up because then on top of that, for a person like me to have been in situations like that, it's flashbacks. Because see, the girl, the it's woman flashbacks. don't even know you. Don't experience. even know all of that stuff. They don't know all no, of that. Don't so even know it, all of that stuff. It, so still, it. but I do. I yeah. know that. And so it's still my choice. And I can, you can still choose. And that's why I will tell anybody, like, there's no excuse. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not the type of person that advocates or gives people licenses or excuse or a way out to say, well, it was okay that you did that. No. No. Can't do it. it was not okay that you did Maybe that. Maybe don't. that. Because two things I, I know from uh, women is that they're going to remember words and they're going to remember 
um, the violence. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's important, even for me, you know, my wife's in the studio with us, is that I got to watch what I say. Yeah. And I struggle with that sometimes. Um, but I try not to say anything that's going to damage her. All right. I hope. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she ain't on the mic. But I think that's just so important to this day is because, um, you know, kids remember, uh, kids in our mentoring program, they remember the stuff they go through. And it's just, it's tough. But we got to wrap this up. Uh, man, we're we going to have to do a part two to this. Man, I'm, I'm for it. So I'm you're going to come back in yeah. May for our Father's yeah, Day edition sure. and have another guest with you. Let's, so as we wrap this up, let me ask you, as a father, what do you see that you feel like you've broken the cycle? Um, yeah, marriage is yeah. 50-50. My right. mom told me the same thing. She mm-hmm. was like, Mark. I asked her when my marriage worked, and she was like, marriage is like rolling the dice. (laughs) Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. That's that's true. So my question is, what would you say um, to a father that's not there for their kids? What would You know, if a father was listening to this podcast, what would you say to him as we wrap this up? Well, I would say in all reality is, you know, one of my children, I'm I'm almost in the same situation, you know, because I got four children, and one of my children, I don't have with me in mm-hmm. my possession, um, you know, in, in all reality, if, if anything that is, is going to make me cry today is that, um, yeah. you know, it's because, you know, I care so much about fatherhood and yeah. uh, being a parent and being to all my children. And, and because of the distance and him being a completely different state, um, That's tough. it's, it's hard, That's tough. you know, it's very tough, tough, you know? And so I would honestly say, um, that, that presence matters. Okay. Um, you know that the presence that you give to your children is the best gift that you can give to them and it's yeah. they they're actually starving for it i agree you know, with that they they starve for the presence of their father and their man um especially if you have uh, a girl um it's very different from a girl to a boy but i will say in under the umbrella of children period that children need their fathers you well, know and they need they need you father that is out there that is that is not spending that time and giving that time um, to your children. They, they absolutely need you and you will, per, you will either damage them yeah. and they will get it from someone else, you know, yeah. or you have the opportunity to step up and be exactly what they need you to be. Well, like Denzel said in the movie Fence, it's step up and be a man. Mm-hmm. And for you to say that, you know, it's still me not to have my kids mm-hmm. around me, especially just in having one, um, I admire you for trying your best to continue to break the cycle. Yeah. And I admire you, your story, everything you went through, because most people who went through story like yours going to become a statistic. Yeah, for sure. They're going to be on the news, either violence, gang violence, and I apologize you for being a dad. So I thank you so that, much man. for coming. Absolutely. Blessing Absolutely. the mic, man, and yeah. really telling your story. So I got to bring you back. Yeah, man, I'm for it. Because you already, you already, your story was just amazing. How you brought in the Antoine Fisher piece, yeah. man. That that was that was that was cool. And for a kid who longed to be with his dad, um, that's just so important. So thank you so much for stopping by. Yeah, and man, blessing absolutely. The mic. Gotta gotta do a part two because yeah, I will, man. There's I more you. To, there's more to that even story about me. Uh, me actually look, finding them. Look too, for so. Brandon Mack for a part two <laughs> in my, in May, man, for our Father's yeah, Day edition. For so it. thank you so much yeah, for absolutely. listening. Thanks, guys. Uh, to another episode of Strong My Father podcast, you can listen to this episode and other episodes by visiting our website at strongerthanmyfather.org. If you like what you've heard, please click the subscribe subscribe button and follow us on all your major social media platforms as again thank you so much Jim McCarthy my producer and our production team for making this podcast great God bless you and see you on another episode of Strong in My Father podcast